Our final type of equilibrium problem involves calculating equilibrium concentrations given initial concentrations for a reaction and an appropriate equilibrium constant value. So let's look at an example of this type of problem. For the following reaction, we have one iodine molecule reacting with one chlorine to produce two iodine monochlorides. And we're given the equilibrium constant value, the case of P value, at 25 degrees Celsius of 81.9. We're also told that we have the initial partial pressures of all reactants and products of 0 0.100 atmospheres. And then we're asked to find the equilibrium concentrations. Our first step in this type of problem is going to be to construct an ICE table and fill in our initial concentrations. Then next we're going to figure out our change in concentration. So we need to figure out the direction it's going to change first. And so that means we'll need to know whether to add to the reactants or the products. We'll do a reaction quotient calculation to figure this out. So our Q sub P, we're going to use the same equilibrium expression that we would for our K value. So it's the partial pressure of our product squared divided by the partial pressures of our reactants. We substitute in our initial concentrations to calculate Q, and we end up with a Q sub P value of 1. Well, this is definitely less than our equilibrium constant value of 81.9. So that means the reaction is going to proceed forward. We're going to increase the uh, concentration of our product and decrease the concentration of our reactant. So we'll add negatives to our reactant change line and a plus to our product change line. So we don't know the amount we'll need to add or subtract in that change line yet. So we're going to represent it with a variable x. And for this reaction, every one mole of iodine and one mole of chlorine react together to produce two moles of the product iodine monochloride. So for the reactants, we have minus 1x. And for the product, we have plus 2x. Next, we'll add together the initial concentrations in the change term to get formulas in terms of x for our equilibrium concentrations for each of our reactants and products. So for the reactants, that's 0 0.100 minus x. And for our product, it's 0 0.100 plus 2x. These equilibrium terms can then be substituted into the equilibrium expression along with our given value for k sub p. So here's our equilibrium expression. k sub p equals the partial pressure of our product square divided by the partial pressure of our reactants. So that, with everything substituted in, gives us 81.9, which comes from the k sub p value that we were given in the problem. And then we take each of our equilibrium concentration formulas and substitute them in for their appropriate partial pressures. And we end up with 0 0.100 plus 2x in parentheses squared divided by 0 0.100 minus x and another 0 0.100 minus x term. And of course the denominator can be condensed so that we end up with uh, 0 0.100 minus x squared on the bottom. And now because both the numerator and the denominator in our expression are squared, we can actually take the square root of both sides. Now we can only do this because we have a square uh, on the top and on the bottom. If only one of these terms was squared and the other was not, we would not be able to take a square root and sim to simply solve our problem. But we can here, so we do. And it does mean if we take a square root on one side, we have to do it on the other side. So we'll also have to take the square root of 81.9.
This reduces to 9.05, and this now gives us the simpler ratio of 0 0.1 plus 2x divided by 0 0.1 minus x. We can get our uh, denominator out of the denominator by multiplying both sides by 0 0.1 minus x. It eliminates itself on the right-hand side, and we end up with 9.05 times that term in parentheses on the left-hand side. We can distribute 9.05 throughout the parentheses on the left. We end up with 0.905 minus 9.05x, and that's still equal to 0.1 plus 2x on the right-hand side. Now we can rearrange to get all of our x terms on the right-hand side and the non-x terms on the left, and that gives us 0.805 equals 11.05x. Now we just solve for x by dividing by 11.05, and we get 0 0.0729. Finally, we can take this value of x that we solved for and substitute it into our equilibrium formulas for the final concentration of each of our reactants and products. So the equilibrium concentration of iodine should be 0.100 minus our x value, 0 0.0729, which gives us 0 0.027 atmospheres. We have the same formula for the equilibrium partial pressure of chlorine. And for our product, iodine monochloride, we add 2 times x to 0 0.100, and it gives us a final partial pressure of 0 0.246 atmospheres. We now have our equilibrium concentrations for each of our reactants and products. As a last check, we can substitute these equilibrium concentrations back into the equilibrium expression and see if we get a value similar to the uh, case of p value that we started with. So when we do this, we actually get a, a case of p of 83. It's not exactly the equilibrium constant value we were given, but accounting for the rounding we did during our calculations, it is definitely within reasonable limits. So let's look at another example, and this time we'll look at the decomposition of molecular iodine, I2, into monoatomic iodine, which is just a plain I. We're given the value for the equilibrium constant, this time k sub c, of 3.76 times 10 to the negative 5. And this is uh, for a temperature of 1,000 degrees Kelvin. We're also told that initially we start with just one mole of our molecular iodine placed into a 2 liter flask. We're asked to figure out the equilibrium concentrations of both the reactant and the product. So our first step will be to create that ice table and to fill it in with what we know. So the initial concentration of uh, molecular iodine that we're given is actually 0.500 moles per liter because we have one mole divided by two liters, which is the volume of our flask. We also assume that we only have that molecular iodine present initially. So that's a zero concentration for our product, monoatomic iodine. And with that zero, we can then assume that the reaction has to proceed forward. We have to add to our products and subtract from our reactants. But we could substitute that zero into a reaction quotient calculation, but it would just give us zero for Q. And that's automatically less than whatever our k value is. It's a small k value, but zero is still definitely less than that. And so that means that the reaction is definitely proceeding forward. So we can express the amount of change then as minus x for our reactant and plus 2x for our product. And that just reflects the stoichiometric coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. And then we can combine those to get the equilibrium formulas for our reactant and product. Now, these formulas can then be substituted into our equilibrium expression. 
and we'll also substitute into it the uh, k value that we were given for k sub c and we end up with 3.76 times 10 to the negative 5 on the left for our k value and on the right we end up with 2x in parentheses and squared outside of it divided by 0.5 minus x. We can get that 0.5 minus x out of parentheses by multiplying by both sides. And so we end up with our equilibrium constant times that 0.5 minus x on the left and 4x squared on the right. So next we can simplify this formula by distributing that 3.76 times 10 to the negative 5 inside the parentheses. And this is what we get. And notice now that we have both an x squared term and an x term. This is a quadratic equation. And with quadratic equations, we generally use the quadratic formula to actually solve for x. So in order to use our formula um, and substituting in the numbers for b, a, and c, we actually do have to put our equation into this form. Uh, so everything on one side equal to zero on the other. So when we do that uh, for the equation that we have above, this is what we get. And we can substitute each of these numbers, a, b, and c, into the general form of the quadratic formula, and this is what we get. I'm not going to bother reading this out, just know that you can substitute this into your calculator and you can simplify, and you'll have uh, only one root from this will actually be reasonable, and so our reasonable root in this calculation is x equals 0.00216 moles per liter. So we can substitute 0.00216 for x into our equilibrium concentration formulas. For molecular iodine, we get 0.498 moles per liter. And for atomic iodine, we get 0.00432 moles per liter. And of course, as a final check, these are our answers right here. As a final check, we can plug these values back into our equilibrium expression, and we get 3.75 times 10 to the negative 5, which is almost exactly the same as the equilibrium constant that we were given in the problem. So our values are reasonable. Okay. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Because the value of k was very small in the last problem, times 10 to the negative 5, there is an alternate way to solve this problem that avoids using the quadratic equation. We have to make some assumptions, though, to do this. And here are the assumptions that we make. When the equilibrium constant is very small, generally on the order of 10 to the negative 3, or smaller. The position of equilibrium is always going to favor the reactants. And what this means is that for relatively large initial concentrations of the reactants, it's not going to change significantly when it reaches equilibrium. So we can make the following assumption that when k is very small, that the amount of change, x, is going to be negligible with respect to that initial concentration. Or to put it mathematically, the reactant concentration at equilibrium is going to be pretty much equal to the initial reactant concentration. So let's redo this problem using the approximation instead of the quadratic formula. And let's see what we get. And again, remember that we can do this simply because our k value is very small, less than 10 to the negative 3. All right, so what we'll assume is that our x term is going to be neg negligible compared to our initial concentration. And that means our 0 0.500 minus x is really approximately 
And when we substitute into our equilibrium expression, we can just use 0 0.500 instead for our molecular iodine term. And then we can isolate our x term more easily. We can get that 0 0.500 out of the denominator by multiplying it by, on both sides. Then we can divide by 4 to get x squared by itself and take the square root and we'll end up with 3.76 times 10 to the negative 5 times 0 0.5 divided by 4. And the square root of that gives us 0 0.00217 moles per liter. This is almost exactly the same what we, as what we got with the quadratic formula. For that, x was equal to 0 0.00216 moles per liter. Now when we make this approximation, it is important to check that our assumption was valid. So in order for this approximation to work, the value of x that we calculate must be less than 5% of the initial concentration. So we can check this by dividing the value of x that we calculate using our approximation by the initial concentration of our reactant and multiplying by 100. Okay, so in this case, we got 0 0.00217 moles per liter. We divide that by the initial concentration of our reactant, 0 0.500 moles per liter, multiply by 100, and we end up with a percentage of 0.434%. This is definitely less than 5%. So the approximation was definitely valid in this case. So in summary, to solve for equilibrium concentrations when we know the value of K, you use an ice table and define the change in equilibrium concentrations in terms of the variable X. Then you substitute those uh, formulas for the equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium expression and you solve for X. Then you can solve for the final equilibrium concentrations. And when your value of K is very small, so generally on the order of 10 to the negative three or smaller, you can simplify the math by assuming that X is much smaller than the initial concentrations. Now, this assumption has to be checked and the value of X that you solve for must be less than 5% of the initial concentrations.